So now I'd like to introduce Tim Papworth, who idly fell off a ladder in 2010, <laughs> and um, is here today, I'm pleased to say, because of the air ambulance, to tell us about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, welcome everybody. Yes, my name's Tim Papworth, and this is my story. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a farmer. I suppose that's still there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I do try and keep it down, but um, being as active as I can. But uh, yes, I wanted to be a farmer, and I hope this uh, little talk of mine gives you some inspiration to go forward um, in whatever you do in life. My farming career started in Norwich, well, I was at school in Norwich, and then decided that um, A-levels were a, a great hobby for me. I was captain of rugby, captain of athletics, um, head of house, and all those senior prefect things, and I was a great leader of men at school, and that's where Norwich School gave me leadership roles. A-levels, they were a sort of sideline. My A-level results were OFF, <laughs> which really summed up my academic capabilities. <laughs> Off. So... Um, that was my A-level, so I then went to Aberdeen, and I studied agriculture at Aberdeen, and then I thought, well, that isn't enough, Dad doesn't want me home yet, so I'll go and do some more. I did a postgraduate in business management in, uh, at Devon, at Seal Hain, and then I went to the States, and I specialised in studying in potatoes. Now, potatoes are stored in dark places. The reason they're stored in dark places is because when they have light on, they go green. So we store them in dark places, but in order to store them in dark places, you need to see what you're doing. Now, if I can get this to work. There we go. You need one of these. You need some light. So, one of my staff said to me, Tim, the light's gone. We can't see what we're doing. Can you do something about it? And being a caring employer my health and safety bit kicked in. I thought, you can't have men working unsafely in dark places. So I thought, I'll change the light bulb. So I had uh, the light bulb effect. Yes, I'm sorry, it's an awful slide. But um, asking to change the light bulb, I thought, right, this needs doing. This is important. I can't have my staff not being able to see and have an accident. So um, what do I need to do that? Ah, some dangerous equipment. I brought some of this along. This comes with me everywhere I go. I cart this about. Now, this is a little prop. If you need to work at height, you need to work at height safely. So I have this, which I cart around. I'm careful not to put it on anything that uh, damages the building. So I can work at height safely. That goes with me everywhere. It's sort of like my little hobby thing. I have a ladder to safely access things at height. I've learned from my experience. So next um, thing I was doing is I was changing this light bulb. And the lovely pictures you've got there. 14 feet, which is about the extent of that ladder, actually. And I was changing a light bulb, a halogen light bulb. Um, a simple task. You get up a ladder, but that's my spine. That was done in 2007 by Anne Ryan Norwich. I have eight vertebrae fused, three discs removed, and in hindsight, now hindsight's a marvellous thing. In hindsight, probably it wasn't the best thing for me to do to go up to a ladder at height. But I did, because I was concerned about my staff working safely. So I went up height and um, changed the light bulb, and I lost balance. And that's the only thing I can remember. I remember losing balance. I don't remember the fall. But below me was concrete. I was in a potato store. So I fell from height. I wasn't afraid of height. I've always been a kid, you know, when I was a boy, I was climbing trees, I was going up tops of buildings, I loved going up church towers and looking at the view from the top of church towers at school. I've been to the top of Norwich Cathedral. A little bit of what I used to do when I was at boarding school, they don't do boarding at Norwich School anymore, but when I was at boarding school at Norwich, in the evenings, we used to sort of have fun around the cathedral, and I found out a route to get into the top of the cloisters, up the drain pipe, into the choir stalls, then once you're inside the cathedral, the doors were open, went up to the Triforium, up to the top of the tower, through the belfry, up into the spire, up, all these ladders up to the top of the spire, and looking out the window at the top. So heights were not a problem for Tim. And a little bit of capitalism came in there in my education. I, some of the friends of mine said, Tim, can you take us? And I said, yes, hmm, do something here. Oh, yes, 50p a go. So I was taking sort of trips of 10, 12 schoolboys 
up to the top of Norwich Cathedral Spire at 50p a go. Um, and uh, that worked really well. Um, I started to learn how to raise money and earn money. This is a timeline of, my, of what happened to me. In October 2010, I went up a light ladder to change a light bulb. And then I had a fall. The paramedic first responder arrived and immediately air ambulance was on its way. And um, you can read that. I don't need to go through all that, but you can see what happened. Um, arrived at Addenbrooke's Hospital. Now, when I arrived at Addenbrooke's Hospital, I was out of it, I can't remember this, but I'm told I landed at the Gog Magog Golf Course. Well, that's a bit strange, Gog Magog Golf. Why didn't I land on a helipad at Addenbrooke's Hospital and straight in? But that's what happened. I think they took me from Gog Magog in an ambulance, but I'm not sure. It might have been wheeled. Um, long way to wheel, I should think. Um, and then five weeks later, I woke up with a very sore head. Um, and uh, then got home for Christmas, and the rehabilita rehabilitation started in January. And the first thing that I went, uh, the Coleman Hospital, by the way, is not a well-known resource. You say to people in Norfolk, the Coleman Hospital, they say, the what? They think Coleman's mustard. But Coleman Hospital is a great resource for people that have had serious injuries, head injuries, and they really had a team of people working on me, speech therapy, because I couldn't speak. I was paralyzed on the left, this arm didn't work. I sort of walked around like this, because it was the right side of my body, my right side of my brain, it was the left-hand side of my body. So the arm didn't work, I could just sort of stumble along. Um, and they had a team of people looking after me, physiotherapy, speech therapy, and occupational therapy, cognitive tests, making sure that I was still clever, which I wasn't. That's what did it for me. That saved my life. If it hadn't been for one of those and the first responders, um, I would not be here to tell my story, and the skill of the people in Addenbrooke's, the surgeons, and um, the team of people rebuilding my life um, really sort of helped me, um, and I'm doing everything I can now to help them. This is the important bit. Over there on the right-hand side is where I fell, a place called Tunstead in North Norfolk. And if you go by car, it's 1 minute 48, is it? One eight, well, sorry, one hour, 48 minutes to go by car in a good day. We ran the edge of Norwich and what have you, traffic and what have you. So if it hadn't been for the air ambulance, I wouldn't have got to Addenbrooke's within the golden hour. Everybody talks about the golden hour. Well, it was so important. That's me before and after. Still very unattractive, aren't I? Um, there was a great hole on my head here where there was no skull. Uh, and that's after having a titanium plate fitted to my head. So it's really strange to be able to itch one's brain. All I had was skin and brain, no skull at all. It was itch my brain, a very strange feeling. Um, and when I went to the Coleman, the first thing they prescribed me was uh, go and get a bike helmet to make sure you don't hit your head. Because Addenbrooke hadn't supplied me with any protection at all, so I went and got a Halfords bike helmet and walked around with that for a little while. Rehabilitation took two years. There's the bike helmet. Now, when you're re getting rehabilitated, your brain, when you're in a coma, I was in a drug-induced coma in Addenbrooke's for five weeks, and when you have that near-death experience and you're laying there totally out of it, your brain works in overdrive. And I dreamt all sorts of things while I was in a coma, that people had had, friends had had babies and they hadn't, friends had got divorced and they hadn't, friends had got married and they hadn't, all sorts of things. I had to learn to relive my life. Um, so, really... That took some time to, to get through that. Um, but I used to get very stressed. I was worried about my family. I was worried about how I was going to carry on in the future, what I was going to do, work, etc. And one of the... I uh, got involved in an act uh, called Access to Work, a great scheme whereby um, the government supplies you a driver to get you around work because I couldn't drive because I lost my licence, got a head injury, and then I had a seizure. So Access to Work did it for me. But this driver was a smoker, and I used to smoke as a boy, and then I gave up, and I was getting really worried and stressed about the future, and how could I get back to where I wanted to be? And it's nicotine. Nicotine did it for me. For some reason, having a cigarette, all of a sudden, my arms start to work. It twitch. Oh, blimey. So I had another one. Whoa, yes. I've got to find something that actually does it for you, and it was nicotine that did it for me. That's my skull. Now, it doesn't come out with pack worth written on it. <laughs> There's the hole that they drilled in. It's all been glued back together, and that's the titanium plate from the size of someone's hand, so you get an idea of... This side of my head is now titanium. 
I am Titanium Tim, the Terminator. <laughs> now, Peter Hutchinson, the brain surgeon at Addenbrooke's, uh, when I saw him, he said, Tim, this is your brain, this is your, sorry, this is your skull. And I said, Peter, what are you going to do with that? He said, Tim, we'll incinerate it. I said, well, it's mine. <laughs> you can't incinerate part of me. I said, well, no, you're right there. Legally, it is yours. If you want it, you can have it. So I said, I'm having that. So I didn't actually bring it along today. Perhaps I should have passed it round. But I have it at home in the safe because I had got home and from that, um, that uh, day at Addenbrooke, I, I left it in the bag downstairs in the hall. I dreamt the bloody terrier got out and found it. It was, <laughs> it was eating my skull. Oh, no. Horrible wet dreams, cold dreams, sweats and what have you. Woke up, made, it's in the safe now. This is the bill from Addenbrooke's. Because when you have time on your hands and you're at home and you're convalescing, you think, how can I get better? Now, in order to get better, I need this titanium plate fitted. Well, the NHS who had saved my life and everything had done at NHS so far, it was going to take six months to get an appointment to have a titanium plate fitted. I thought, hmm, I've got some private health insurance. I wonder if they'll do that on private health. Rang the insurance company. Yes, you're eligible. Great. Where would you like it done? Addenbrooke's by Peter Hutchinson. Two problems there, sir. Addenbrooke's is not registered for private health. Peter Hutchinson is not a private health person, doctor, surgeon. So, no. I said, what do I do? Get them registered. So I had plenty of time. So I got Addenbrooke's registered to do private health. I got Peter Hutchinson, the surgeon, registered to do private work. Within six weeks, I was in there having it done. And the titanium plate, here's someone, let me see it, 1,500 quid. The night in Addenbrooke's, a few hundred, and the surgery was 1,060. Uh, uh, very, very cheap. Neurosurgery in Addenbrooke, so I couldn't believe that it was that cheap. This guy wasn't so lucky. This guy, we all know him. He had a very similar incident. He was wearing a helmet, two bleeds on the brain, which is exactly what I had, and he's not in a good place now. He wasn't treated by the right people at the right time, at the right, in the right place. Now, this guy. This guy's the guy that saved my life with the air ambulance. Harris. The girls love him. They, he's a real, they, they all fancy the, the pants off Harris. I um, don't get that luck, I'm afraid. But uh, Harris, amazing guy. He was able to, it was his first appointment to anaesthetize a first patient. And um, these are the things I've learnt. Uh, determination, persistence, and the will succeed my drive. Along the way, I've learned patience and timmy time. I need to take time out myself. I do quite a lot of that nowadays. I call it smoking. Um, value of things, things that have changed. Yes, I have got funny sleep patterns. Sometimes I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and email people. Um, sometimes I'm asleep at sort of 5 o'clock in the afternoon if I had a busy day. So uh, funny sleep patterns are very OCD now, and that's part of it. Um, but I work harder than ever now with everything I do to really prove a point that I'm back. That's my trailer that we take around farm visits and what have you, and I now have a lovely East Anglian Air Ambulance banner which I'm putting on here, and we just let farmers have that, and they say, what could we owe you, Tim? And I just say, well, just pay the East Anglian Air Ambulance whatever you think it's worth. And we raise quite a lot of money through letting people use that for all sorts of different functions. And that's me now, January this year, back to normal, hunting with my daughter. And this is the real success, earlier this month, we managed to win the business Grow of the Year of Potatoes. I'm a potato fanatic. So you can't get any better than that. That's really pleased me to do that. And the last slide, or well, that's why I do it, the family. And final slide, this, you always need a challenge in life. I find you need a challenge in life, and my last challenge to overcome everything, to say, Tim, you're back where you were before, is I'm going to get my HGV class 1 back. And that will probably be in the next couple of years. When I've got my HGV class 1 back, I shall say, Tim, you're back there where you were before. Thank you very much. I hope I've given you some inspiration. I've been enjoy speaking to you.